What's going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another video. In today's video, we're going to cover 10 clothing items that sold on eBay in 2017. But these aren't going to be just any old clothing items. These are actually going to be... Oops. Sorry. Had my second feet up. These are going to be clothing items that could easily be overlooked for me at least i've been in the clothing game for over four years and you know i'm humble enough to admit i don't know it all not even close i know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brands that sell extremely well or at least okay on ebay but there's also plenty of brands that when i'm searching the sold listing listings studying them researching them I'm scratching my head like, really? That sold for 150 I've never even heard of that brand. So there's going to be quite a few brands that I might have seen in the past once or twice. Who knows? I might have forgot about them. I may have never seen them. But these are going to be 10 clothing items that sold on eBay in 2017 that could easily be overlooked. Even you know, mid-tier and, and veteran clothing sellers, you could possibly overlook these. So I'm going to go in the comment section and say hello to everybody. What's going on, Joshua Davis? Who be the real? What's going on? Deborah in the house. Good to see you. Joshua says, got three dress shirts yesterday. Excited to post clothes for the first time. Measurements are my only challenge. You know, check out my channel. I've got some videos about measurements, but you know, for button front shirts, you know, chest length sleeves, t-shirts, chest length. Um, you know, obviously if you have suits, you're going to want to throw in a shoulder waist measurement and then obviously the, the waist and the, the inseam, but it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, um, you know, you can ask away, but be sure to check out my channel. Travis says he got the 75% off deal. So for folks who are coming in and don't know what that is, I actually um, gave away 25 free book bundles earlier today. It sold out within a minute uh, on the live feed. So there were 25 lucky winners. Um, but there, since there were so many people who missed out, I decided to extend a special deal. So if you go to rakeandprofit.com forward slash free books and use the code 75 off, you can save 75% off of my book bundle. That's 101 Killer Clothing Brands, 102, and the Blazing Profits training program. So that will probably sell out within, probably by the end of the show, I'm assuming. There's only 25 um, promo codes available. So check that out in the description. What's up, James Miller? Good to see you guys. Shane, Randy, how are you? All right, guys, so let's dive into this. The first item that could easily be overlooked is the brand L.L. Bean. Now, L.L. Bean has a lot of parallels with brands such as Ralph Lauren Polo, per se, because Ralph Lauren Polo has a lot of items that do okay, but then there's other items that are super rare, like, you know, 1992 stadium um, shirts or sweaters with a big bear or just something unique with a patch, Ralph Lauren Polo sport. There's certain items within a lot of brands, but especially Ralph Lauren Polo, that go extremely high in terms of resale. And the same uh, stands true to an extent with L.L. Bean, especially if you find find any of that Freeport uh, main items, the vintage stuff, lambskin, leather jackets, just unique stuff in the L.L. Bean brand can do well. And here's a perfect example. Here we have a full zip, uh, which appears to be somewhat of a vintage sweater, I want to say. Um, you know, all the colors of the rainbow on it. This sold for $54.99. And you know, how many other resellers out there who sell clothes would pass this up? I bet you a lot of people would. So L.L. Bean, vintage, um, at least vintage looking, size large sweater. It's just unique. It's different. It's weird. It's odd. And you know what? This is actually Freeport, Maine as well. So uh, no surprise over here. If you find anything Freeport, Maine, L.L. Bean, and it's unique and different in some way, look it up because there's a good chance that it could actually go for some good money. If you guys saw my latest video, my garage sale finds video from this weekend, I actually found a leather Freeport, Maine, L.L. Bean jacket for $2 at a garage sale from a reseller who sells auctions, um, uh, storage lockers and whatnot. So can't believe that he let that slip through his fingers. And also two, um, uh, True Religion jeans, which I actually just sold a pair for, I think it was fifty fifty seven ninety nine plus shipping or forty nine ninety nine plus shipping. So, anyways, Freeport, Maine, LL Bean. Here's a brand that I've never come across before, and the reason I mention this, 
not saying that I didn't know about this brand, but I could easily overlook it because I'm just not familiar with it. I don't see the tag often. And the brand is in Kotex. So take a look at this right here. There's really not much to say about it because I'm, to be honest, I don't know much about it. Um, but I know that this brand does sell extremely well. Um, and it, it appears that the brand, the tag is always on the inside. So just be on the lookout for this brand, I-N-C-O-T-E-X. And if I go to the sold listings right here uh, in Kotex under men's clothing and I go to sold and I go to used, you're going to see that a lot of these items are selling for good money. So don't overlook this brand. Um, it's easy to overlook any brand that you're not familiar with. So that's why you always got to look inside these, uh, you know, pants and certain items because the tag is not always on the outside. So that's a pretty cool item right there. Next item is this Scotty Vest brand um, that sold for 75 bucks. I've never heard of this brand before. Ever. So let me know in the comments section if you guys have ever heard of this Scotty vest for the trip of your life. Um, I've never heard of the brand. I don't know anything about it. Just taking a look. It looks like that might have fur. Now, one thing that I tend to do very well, and anyone with experience will tend to do this as well, even if you don't know a brand, you'll learn with experience what quality feels like. You'll feel an item and you may not know the brand, but it just feels like it's got money in it, right? Um, you got to look it up. So, you know, who knows? Maybe I would have been flipping through and I would have felt this or I would have noticed the attention to detail or an interesting color scheme or a pattern or a material. Who knows? I don't know if I would have passed it up, um, but Scotty Vest is 75 bucks. Let's take a look under men's clothing to see if this is a one-off or if this brand is doing extremely well. I'll tell you right now, guys, I have been researching clothing a ton lately, and I honestly think that I could come out with another book, 103 Killer Clothing Brands, because there is so many brands out there that I've been learning about and that I know people are passing up. So if you think and you and you want to see 103 Killer Clothing Brands come out, if I could put it together, let me know in the comment section. It might have to come to reality. But check this out. It, it, it appears that this brand is selling very, very well. Jackets, um, newer tags. Let me go to used because you're probably not going to find uh, newer tags in the field. Yeah, this is a hot brand right here. So write this brand down. Um, a lot of times we don't come across certain brands because they're, you know, they may be popular in certain countries or certain areas of the country. So, you know, there's so many brands out there. It's, it's ridiculous, but this is definitely a hot brand. So hopefully you guys learn something new, um, with this brand. Let me check the comments real quick and we'll keep moving forward. Bear with me for one moment. If you guys are enjoying this, be sure to hit the like button. Looks like we got about 77 people watching live. We got 22 thumbs up, only one thumb down. So I like the ratio there. Be sure to show some love if you are enjoying this uh, video. What's up, Karen Spencer? She says, I'd buy it. Randy says, do you have an eBay account strictly just for clothing or just one eBay store for everything you sell? I actually have three various uh, eBay stores. I have you know, two that I mostly sell on and one that I don't really sell on much. I opened up, I honestly, I opened up multiple just because I was getting like harassed by so many people um, off of my YouTube channel that I just kind of wanted some privacy. Um, you know, people will find my store and I don't, you know, I, I don't put it out there, but people find it and they look at it and whatnot. But um, in terms of your question, I do have, um, you know, certain stores where I like to put more uh, common items in it. Does it make a difference? I don't think it really makes a difference. There, there were times where I thought, you know, maybe I wanted to have a store just for clothing and then just for electronics. But I honestly think, you know, that's just like, you're just worrying about small things. I think the key is just to list more items. UK re reseller. Hey, have you found out yet who won the 25 books? Actually, during the live show, 25 people won instantly. I, I gave out the code and it sold out within like two minutes. So uh, those have all been given away. Um, you kind of had to be there live because they sold out so quick. But I do have 75% off right now. If you go into the, uh, the comment section, uh, excuse me, into the description, you can get the link there. 
Danny says, interested to know how well or if Dickies workwear sells in the U.S., quite popular in the U.K. I know Dickies is pretty popular over here as well. I don't have much experience selling it, so I would just go into the sold listings and uh, do what I'm doing right here. It's the best way. Just get straight raw data to see if it's selling and if there's any uh, money in it. <clears throat> Clear and cluttered for clarity. What's going on, girl? Good to see you. All right, guys. So the next brand that sold on eBay in 2017, just recently, um, actually today it looks like, is the brand Rogue Territory. Again, another brand I don't think I've ever heard of before. Um, there's so many brands out there, guys. It's it's insane. It uh, looks like Hashtags Menswear, menswear uh, sold this for 189 99 so let's take a look at this it looks like it's uh like a wax jacket kind of like barber i don't know if you guys know that brand but they have a lot of wax cam canvas jackets uh rogue territory so there's the tag take a look at it looks like it's got the rgt uh circled with a little uh, eagle looks like that's their their tag so let's go into the sold listings and see if this was a one-off or if this brand is selling extremely well or maybe just mediocre. So there it is. Let's go under, uh, let's go under sold. Wow, look at that. Button front shirt, 65. Jeans, 31. Another pair for 130. This is what I like to call a bada bing, bada boom. The profits are coming soon. Check out this brand, April 29th, uh, 29th. This brand is selling super duper hot. So that's another great brand, Rogue Territory. Next up is the brand Super Dry. This is a brand that I had heard of uh, previously. I've never found it. Actually, I might have found one. But I want to say there's a 90% chance I didn't find it. I get a little bit confused sometimes because I do so many of these videos. It's hard for me to differentiate what I actually bought and what I actually just researched. Um, but I'm going to say I don't think I found this item. Super dry. The Alpha shirt, extra large, pre-owned, vintage. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily vintage. Maybe it has a vintage look because the you know the um, patches look somewhat current. But I might be wrong. Uh, Super dry is a brand, again, I'm not very, very familiar with. Um, so in turn, I could pass it up because I'm just not used to seeing it. But um, that's why it's so important to, you know, uh, do these videos and research with you guys because there's just so much money out there and so many different brands. You got to stay current. So it looks like it's just gotten a title, Vintage Super Dry, the shirt, Tokyo, Japan. So maybe this is popular in Japan. So if uh, the college picker is watching this, let me know if you see anybody wearing this shirt. Uh, Eric, the college picker, is actually on a bike tour right now in Japan. So uh, shout out to you. Here we have a cashmere sweater by the name, uh, the brand name Murray Allen. Now this is another brand that I'm sure I've seen it in the sold listings. Off the top, I'm not like recollecting it. Um, but take a look at the tag right here, DL Lord by Murray Allen. So I don't know if these are two different companies. Uh, cashmere, hot. Uh, sweaters made in 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 um, Scotland, hot. And if you get a certain brand associated with all three of those, you can make some really, really good money. Again, I don't know much about this brand. That's why, you know, it could easily be passed over uh, by myself and maybe others. But uh, anytime you find cashmere, you always want to double check the brand because cashmere is expensive in the store. And even lower end brands can bring in some decent money. Here we have an NHRA uh, drag racing jacket. You got the flames coming up right here. You've got the NHRA uh, on the sleeve. I don't know much about drag racing, so I'm sure anyone who's into racing, this is probably some big um, federation or something. I don't really know, um, or a race, but this sold for $43.70. Anytime you find something weird like this, something that's just, you know, it's it's branded, right? And it's like themed with some type of event or something special like that. You see the flames, the cool color. You always want to look this up. Like if I came across this, I would simply just go to eBay and I would type in NHRA jacket. Like that's all I would type in. And I guarantee if I did that, I would probably find this um, listing or something similar come up. And you can easily see if there's value there. So even if you're not knowledgeable or you don't know what something is if it's interesting and unique i keep using those words because it's so true look it up it only takes a second um 
Super dry is from Japan, but has a very popular store in New York City. Your UK reseller says, Steve, super dry is very popular over in the UK. I guess it would be the same. Should invest in some to try them out. I might have to do that. What is your best selling men's clothing? There are so many brands out there. It's, it's really hard to name. There's so many of them. To name one, I love selling Vineyard Vines items. I like selling Brooks Brothers. I like selling Pendleton, uh, Vintage Woolrich, uh, starter items, right? Anything. I just listed up a uh, Miami Dolphin starter jacket. I mean, that was those things do extremely well. There's just too many to list. It's literally impossible. But I don't know what the best-selling one is. I sell so many different brands. It's it's ridiculous. Darren Eckelmans is rakeandprofit.com. Exactly. What's the best place to get mannequins? Check out my video that I made. Type in rake and profit mannequins into YouTube and you'll see exactly where to get them. Ocher Wicked, what's up, homie? Good to see you. <laughs> Hoover the Real says, uh, cleaned out my death pile uh, this weekend. I like it. I like it a lot. You got to clean out that death pile. Josh Awary wants to know, Steve, how do you sell brands like Ralph Lauren for so much? I buy them in the UK for five and only able to sell them for 10 max. You got to find the right types of items, guys. Like, for example, um, here, I'll go over and show you really quick. Like, for example, if you go to Ralph Lauren and let's go to used, uh, pre-owned, let's go to sold. This is the number one thing that you guys have to learn about selling clothing. All because you find a brand that's well-known and popular like Ralph Lauren, it doesn't mean you're going to sell every item for good money. So what does that mean in English? Some items are going to sell for five to six bucks. Others are going to sell for 500 for a thousand. Those are two extremes right there. You know, a lot of Ralph Lauren polo stuff sells for 10, 15 bucks on average. Most, you know, high end stuff, maybe a hundred, 150, but there are cases where you find unique, rare things that could sell for over a thousand bucks. So here's the deal, guys. Ralph Lauren, you've got to find the right items. It's all about the size. It's all about the color. It's all about the rarity. It's all about the design, the material. Um, is it themed? Is it unique? Is it hard to come by? Is it mainstream? Is it is it trending? There's so many different factors, but all you guys have to do is go to Ralph Lauren in eBay, hit the sold listings, and just start looking around to see. Oh, okay, look, the pants go for $16.99. Oh, here's... Um, you know, a button front for eleven seventy five. Oh, that's a large, but look, the four extra large went for twenty five. There's so many different factors; it's absolutely mind blowing. But here, if we start from highest first, you're going to see things selling for look six thousand one hundred dollars. Six thousand dollars. Check this out. Imagine walking into a thrift store and finding this. Holy mackerel! If I found this, I would just retire. I would never work another day in my life. I could promise you that. I would, I would get a place, I would set up a tent in the woods and just retire. Um, hopefully you guys know I'm kidding. Um, okay, check this out, $3,200. I've never been to a beach with snow, but I tell you right now, after looking at this, I want to go to a snow beach. Holy moly, jackpot city, bada bing, bada boom. The profits are coming soon. 3200 bucks. I mean, are you ever going to find this? You might not find this in 20 lifetimes. But it's out there, so that's my little rant for the day. The next item I want to share with you is another brand that I don't know if I've ever come across this before. I know I've never sold this brand. Pretty confident. Coach or Koch? Uh, K-O-C-K. Some interesting keywords in the title. Supplies, meat, food, processing equipment, insulated coat parka. So I'm assuming that whoever would wear this might be Dealing with meat or processing food in a very cold refrigerator or freezer. Uh, $49.95. I mean, I could pass this up. I mean, I don't know. It's got a cool little penguin on the front, so that's pretty neat. Uh, but $49.95, it just sold. Actually, today it sold. So uh, definitely spend some time studying this brand right here. There is the little penguin next to the tag. <clears throat> James Miller, what advice would you give yourself regarding clothing five years ago? I would tell myself to start sooner and take more chances. Um, yeah, you definitely got to take chances. I mean, I would tell myself, you know, considering it depends. If I was five years ago, I was a one-man show, which 
I still am now, but there was a period where I had employees. Um, five years ago, I tell myself, focus on items that have a good enough profit margin. Uh, when I first got started, I was messing with a lot of items that only made three bucks profit, four bucks profit, you know, super long tail items that only make me like a couple dollars profit or seven bucks profit, I would be a little more pickier and I would tell myself, spend more time studying, spend more time researching. Um, also, I would tell myself, spend some more time, you know, experimenting with different thrift stores and traveling more and seeing different places because you find a really good honey hole. Honey hole, you can kill it. You got to find the places that have the good clothing in your area. Uh, here's a pretty weird little item. This is a, uh, a jacket, a full zip jacket with the Sunoco logo on the front saying something racing. I want to say ultra racing. Um, just weird. Like I can't say it enough guys. If you find a jacket or a shirt that just has, you know, an interesting patch or it's themed with something, whether it's a gas station or the United States post office, like here's another example of a great item, cycling jerseys. Cycling jerseys can bring you in good money, but they've got to be themed and branded correctly. If you ever find a cycling jersey like, you know, the bike riders wear when they're cycling, like one of those tight, you know, it's got the pockets in the back. If you ever find one of those that is branded by the United States Post Office or UPS or something like anything to do with shipping, I don't know why, uh, it sells really well. And this sold, it actually sold, uh, when did it sell? I'm not sure, but 55 bucks plus $7 shipping. That's pretty cool. And last up is a brand that I'd never heard of before. Emilio Yusti or Uste. Emilio Uste, we'll, we'll call it that. Uh, we got a window pane design men's suit, 52 long, 44 by 32 is the pants measurement, 79.20. I would have never known. I want to. I want to spend a little time in the sold listings looking at this. Uh, Emilio. Uh, let's. I think that's how you spell it. I'd never heard of this brand before. And all because one sells really well doesn't mean they're all going to sell. I mean, look at this: three ninety nine, eleven. Fourteen ninety nine, hundred dollar best offer, forty eight. So I don't know. You know. Okay, let me let me break it down. I don't know if every single one of these is going to sell well. Uh, one warning sign is these things aren't selling often. I mean, February thirteenth, twenty fifth, and look, there was a there was a month period between any that sold. So it's not selling often. Let's see how many are even for sale. Thirty one. So it's not a super hot brand. I mean, if you got it for a couple bucks, I might buy it and just you know, a long tail item that pops down the road. Um, but you got to realize there's a certain market for every brand. And, you know, another piece of advice I would give myself from five years ago is, you know, Steve, buy items that have a market because there was, there was quite a bit of items that I purchased where maybe only one sells every three to six months and it's just not worth to sit on it. Um, considering the margins or the profit margins that are going to come, you know, in the back end. So try to focus on brands and items that have a market and have proven sales and there's data and analytics backing it up instead of just going with my intuition. I mean, it's 2017. There's no need to make buying decisions just based off of your gut. There's numbers and there's data for 95% of the items out there to back up with reasoning and logic. So um, that's, that's another piece of advice that I would give myself. So yeah, those are the 10 clothing items that um, I wanted to share with you guys, 10 clothing items that have sold on eBay in 2017. Most of these were recent sales, and most of these brands were brands that I'm not very familiar with that I could have easily passed up if I was rushing or wasn't really taking my time and, and focusing. And, and this could have been the case for you. So hopefully you learned something. Let me know in the comment section, guys, if you learned about any new brands, if you enjoyed this video, if you did, Hit the like button for sure. Leave a comment, subscribe, say hello. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into the Q&A portion of this video. Let me grab a drink and uh, we'll answer some questions and try to help you guys out as much as possible. <clears throat> All right, let me see what's going on in the comment section. So UK reseller saying, when choosing a good brand of clothing to sell on eBay, <clears throat> Always keep in mind the season you're in right now, like summertime would be shorts, t-shirts, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, seasonality is definitely uh, plays a plays a strong role. But for me, you know, if there's data backing something up, you know, for example, say, you know, that coach or Koch, you know, jacket, you know, 
if there's data and it's summertime, even though it's it's a little different of a scenario because that's more of like an indoor like working in freezers and meat processing. But anyways, like if I was to find like a winter item in the summer, but I see that there's data that these things are selling, I'm still gonna buy it, right? But I think what um what UK reseller was trying to say, I think it was UK re resellers trying to say is you're gonna sell items better in the right season. So definitely keep that in mind. Joshua Davidson is asking, if you don't have poly bags for clothes, what else can you put them in before uh, the padded envelope? Uh, you can put them in a poly mailer. Um, but besides that, besides a poly bag, a poly mailer is just like one of those white bags that aren't see-through and it's a little thicker. Um, besides that, I mean, you would probably just slide it in with nothing else. I mean, poly bags are the way to go. Just order them off eBay or Amazon and get them for a couple cents each. In the sun by the beach. Don't even go there with my pronunciations. I will block you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. I, I love you always stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, Joshua is asking, when is the right time to reduce the price in an item? It just really depends. I mean, depends on your business model. Depends how long you've been sitting on it. Um, you know, some people like the, uh, you know, the, the fast turn uh, approach. Others don't mind waiting a little longer to get, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40% more. So it just really depends. Um, for me, usually after a month or a couple months, I might reduce the price, but you know, I don't even, I've gotten so, how do I say this without sounding? Um, not that I've gotten so good, but with experience, you get a, you get a better feel for what things will sell for. And in addition to that, I'm trying to run sales all the time. Even if it's like, like right now, I think I have like a 5% sale running my entire store. I like to always have sales running. And on top of that, I like to have best offers. So even if I overprice something, if someone's interested in that, which hopefully they will, because I take really nice pictures. And I think that separates me from the competition a bit. They'll either make an offer or um, the sale will reduce the price a bit and, and help with the sale. So I don't really go in and change prices much, to be honest. Unless something's been sitting forever. Uh, S. Mursky is asking, if you were just getting started, would you focus on only one outlet? Example, just eBay, or would you do half and half eBay and Amazon? You know, I'd probably start with one, right? So get to know eBay and learn it master it in a sense, right? Start making some money, figure out how it works. And then at that point, you can either, you know, reduce your time to start learning about Amazon or outsource part of the business, maybe the photography or listing or something uh, and learn about a new platform. But I would start with one and, um, you know, really get good at it and understand it and then outsource or, you know, limit your time and learn something else. But I think the name of the game though, once you start to get some experience under your belt is to diversify, you know, you don't want to be, you know, would Warren Buffett only invest in one thing? Of course he wouldn't. He's going to invest in oil. He's going to invest in gold. He's going to invest in insurance companies or whatever. I don't know. Um, but Warren Buff Buffett would never just put all his money in one platform. And I don't care who you are. I think it's extremely risky and there's a liability putting all your eggs in one basket. That's why for me personally, I'm not just based around reselling. You know, I do other things. I have books that I invested in and outsourced years ago, a couple of years ago that make me a couple thousand bucks a month. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got my own products. I've got Craigslist. I've got eBay, Amazon, and I'm nothing special. I'm a nobody. I'm just an average guy, but it just goes to prove Anybody can do it. I'm not special. You're not special. Anybody can do it if you're willing to work and learn and invest in yourself and plant seeds. That's the key. Plant seeds. What do I mean by that? If you're selling on eBay and that's the only thing you're doing, plant a little Amazon seed, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, spend an hour, two hours a week, you know, learning about how to send out, you know, books to FBA. And, you know, when you're at thrift stores, pick up a few books. Even if you have a shipment of like 10 items, plant that seed and nurture it and water it and let it, let it grow. And then when that starts growing, you know, plant a little Craigslist seed or an offer up seed or plant a little, um, you know, YouTube seed and start making some YouTube videos. And, you know, there's a million different things you can do. It's insane, but I don't think it's a smart idea to just have one, one income stream. I would diversify for sure. Uh, Brian, how can you get constant income coming in on eBay? Do you get a lot of items or get items with a higher value? Uh, Brian, the key is just listing, man. You got to list more items. The, the, you know, the more items you list, the more money you're going to make typically considering you're finding 
items that have a market, A, have a market, um, and B, you know, you just list them up and, you know, good keywords, good pictures. But I mean, if you find items that have a market and you're buying at the right price, so, you know, say something has a resale of 20 and you buy it for two and there's a market there, I mean, you're not going to lose. You know, you got to learn how to ship, you know, effectively and everything like that. But the name of the game, you want to make more money, buy more and list more. You know, that's a simplistic answer, um, but go to thrift stores more, hit the garage sales on the weekend, you know, study the sold listings like we're doing right here. This is key. This is the groundwork. This is the foundation. This is your training right now. This is training. When I'm doing this video with you, I'm training. I'm training and I'm practicing for when I'm in the field, from what I'm at a garage sale, I'm at a thrift store because I don't want to be spending time looking items up when I'm at a garage sale because time is of the essence. You will get slaughtered out in the field if you go to a garage sale, a neighborhood garage sale, and the competition's crazy. I mean, you could be pulling out so much money theoretically out of your pocket by spending 15 minutes looking something up versus, boom, I know what that is. Okay, that's an Emilio who stay suit like I'm buying it I know I could get 30 or 40 not the best example but that's the point this is training this is you know blood sweat and tears no it's not that crazy I'm I'm being dramatic but this is what it's all about right here in the trenches just learning and studying James Miller band I smell a new video coming out 10 income streams I smell a new video called uh 10 ways to plant a seed um in the sun by the beach let's see Politics aren't good for your blood pressure and stress levels. That's why I watch you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Joy says, I've noticed that most of my sales on eBay have been on Sundays. Is this normal? I have about 60 items listed at this time. I'm starting slow as I learn. Um, yeah, I did really well yesterday on Sunday. So Sundays, I think people are, you know, they're, you know, Friday is like everyone's partying and having fun and, you know, drinking their beers and kicking back. They're getting out of work. Saturday, it's like, you know what, Saturday's my day. I don't, people don't want, you know, people don't want you to mess with them. They want to do what they want to do. But Sunday's almost like, okay, let's get ready for the week. Let's get prepared. Okay, I need a new pair of pants or I got to order that charger or, you know, I need that, um, you know, that, that cord for my DVD player. And so I think they're like getting prepared and they're getting ready for the week and they're ordering things like on Sunday, funny thing. I spent like over 200 bucks, just like ordering everything that I needed for the week. I got some new, uh, photography lights. I bought shelving. I bought a bunch of stuff. And, uh, I think a lot of people do that. I think it's normal. So I think Sunday's typically a good day for that reason. Just looking at the comments. I'm actually not a top rated seller. Um, let's see. So right now, you know, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I haven't been selling much on eBay. I mean, I've maintained it, and I've got a couple different stores. Uh, but the new store that I'm, I'm – uh, it's not a new store. It has a bunch of feedback. But the store that I'm working on now uh, has 85 items listed. So um, I've got – if you guys saw my video from earlier, I've got quite a bit of uh, items to list. So – should be up to a couple hundred pretty soon. Uh, should be well over a couple thousand dollars in sales uh, fairly soon on on the account that I'm working on right now. So you know, the more you list, the more you sell. That's the key. And uh, I'm hoping to um, hire hire some help soon within phase three. If you guys have been following phase one, phase two, phase three is when I hire somebody. And um, I focus mostly on just sourcing items and I'm going to train them to photograph my items, to list my items. Um, and then I'll do the shipping because it's probably not going to make sense having someone ship and come in for, you know, a half hour a day because I'm, you know, I'm pretty small eBay seller right now. Let's see. I'm just looking at to see what some, some of the questions are. Hey, Bobby Moons, good to see you. So Joshua says the cube is sick, by the way. Can't, can't stop thinking about it. Hey, Joshua, stop thinking about my cube, man. You're freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, Josh, the uh, that, that photography cube is, it's great. I've been having a lot of fun listing my small items, and I had a lot of small items that needed to be listed. And with that photography cube, it's just been a blessing. It, it just 
the pictures look great. If you guys are listening right now, check it out. Um, check out my video, and you can you can actually check out the cube at uh, rakenprofit.com forward slash cube, and um, you can pick yours up on Amazon. So you can check that out. It's it's great. It's I love it. Uh, what is the best time to start in an in, in eBay listing? Just list it. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't know the answer. Um, I really don't. I just just list it. I I've never really looked too much into that but I think if you use like the Terapeak software um, I don't know if it integrates with the eBay and lets you know the best times it may but check out Terapeak if you're really interested in like that raw data and those those deep analytics uh, Ernest says the more you list the more you sell that's true I haven't been full-time on eBay for years um, if you've been listening, um, you might have just come in, Aaron. But good to see you, Aaron. Um, you know, I have multiple income streams, so um, there's times where I spend, you know, twenty or thirty hours a week on Amazon. Excuse me. Sometimes there's twenty or thirty hours a week I spend on eBay. Sometimes there's twenty or thirty hours a week I spend on YouTube. Sometimes there's twenty or thirty hours a week I spend on uh, the green room, the membership site. So I kind of jump from income stream to income stream. I've planted a lot of seeds over the years, and I tend to focus on different things and that's me and that's my personality and that's what I enjoy and that's you know I've just built a lifestyle that I really am, am, am pleased with and happy with so um I'm not full time I'm not um you know I'm not a full time big seller but I know what I'm doing and I can guarantee you that if you're looking to learn how to get started or you want to grow your eBay business I can definitely help you out so should I iron or wash clothes before sending them out? Um, you know, I would, I would, I don't iron. I have a steamer. If you saw my video today, I show you my steamer uh, in my little workspace. So I'll steam it if it's really bad. I actually have a uh, ex officio new tag shirt that I'm getting ready to list, and I keep putting it aside because I haven't felt like steaming it because I have so many other clothing items to list. But um, yeah, I would steam it. You know, make the pictures look good. But I wouldn't spend way too much time. You know, worrying about that, and you know, I don't, I don't wash any of my clothes, like ever, like unless it's like super dirty or it smells. Uh, if it smells like cigarettes, I like won't even. I, I'm not gonna wash it because I don't want to like destroy my 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 washing machine with cigarette smoke. I used to be a smoker, and it just like disgusts me now. Nothing against anybody who smokes, but I used to be a smoker, so I'm allowed to say that, right? <laughs> um, jo Joseph says, "Wow, thanks, Raken." So this is, uh. Still alive. <laughs> uh, I smashed the like button. Also, bro, I'm still at. I'm still a small fry, but I'm trying to climb up. Continue the great work. Hey, man, I'm a small fry too. So um, let's level up together. Clear and clutter, clutter for clarity. Oh, I sold one of those shirts. Yes, you did. Connecticut accent for sure. I guess I do, right? I got that East Coast accent. But I think that's about it, guys. I got to get rolling. Um, I really enjoyed spending some time with you guys. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the like button right now. We only got 56 likes right now and 100 people watching. We got to get up to 100 likes, guys. I'm watching. I want to see it go up. I'm listening. I'm watching. Okay, it's slowly going up. Great. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions to get you moving in the right in the right direction. Uh, yeah, have yourself a great day. Again, if um, you didn't catch the video from earlier, check that out. I took you guys behind the scenes um, from phase two of my new eBay and Amazon uh, workspace in my new apartment. So I think you guys will find a lot of value in seeing some of the supplies and different tools behind the scenes that um, that I'm using. I know a lot of people don't really share that. So I think that'll bring a lot of value to you guys. Be sure to check that video out. Also, if you guys want to get my complete book bundle, 101, 102 killer clothing brands and the Blazing Profits training program, there's a couple slots left. Um, for the special code, you can find that in the description, 75% off, rakingprofit.com forward slash free books. Use the code 75 off and you can grab yourself some digital copies. So with that being said, guys, keep on picking and making that money and I will see you in the next video. Keep on rocking. Talk soon.